an M1 jungle carbine and you say, Paul, I know about the M1 carbine, I'm a pretty hip cat. What makes it a jungle carbine? Welcome back to the Saigon Report. We're going to continue on with our discussion of Vietnam era firearms. And today I'm holding in my hand an M1 jungle carbine. And you say, Paul, I know about the M1 carbine. I'm a pretty hip cat. What makes it a jungle carbine? Well, if you look at the end right here, you'll see something that's unique or different. It's the addition of a flared muzzle brake. If you know anything about the World War II firearms, most of them did not have this but they decided, hey, we could put on a muzzle brake and tamp down some of that flash. Probably a good idea. And these became nicknamed the jungle carbines. Now, most of you, if you think about Vietnam, you think M16A1, right? That was the issue rifle, but it wasn't initially the issue rifle. When we started sending troops over to Vietnam, our troops were not initially combat troops. They were Mac SOG or the Military Advisory Command Studies and Observation Group. The first guys, the first Americans to go to Vietnam were there to advise and instruct not to engage in combat. What did we have at the very beginning of our involvement in Vietnam in the 1960s? Well, we had literal Connex boxes, ships full of M1 carbines. During World War II, M1 carbines were made not just by your standard firearms manufacturers, but they were made by Singer Sewing Machine, Rockola Jute Boxes, Remington, the typewriter people. Everybody in the United States converted over to build carbines and pistols and so forth for the war effort. Now this one in my hand right here, this is an inland version, an inland manufacturing gun. Now what was the 30 carbine? Well, the 30 carbine was a semi-automatic, lightweight, carbine firearm and what you see right in here is a 30 round magazine now what did they call the 30 round magazines in vietnam they called them jungle clips i know a lot of you guys out there are like don't say clip they were called jungle clips live with it now the standard issue as you may or may not know was a 15 round magazine what was the cartridge well it was the 30 carbine cartridge why were these a good fit for the beginning of Vietnam? Well, not only did we have a ton of them, but we were issuing these guns, we were land leasing them to our allies in Southeast Asia. Now our allies were generally not as large physically as their American counterparts, and this relatively lightweight carbine gun was easy for them to carry. And when you're training someone to use this firearm, it has a relatively easy learning curve. It's very straightforward. Uh, you got a cross bolt safety. You have your bolt up here, your magazines. It didn't take very long for a military advisor to teach our little allies how to use them. So what was this gun made out of? Well, like all World War II guns, you had a lot of steel and a lot of hard wood. Very little aluminum and very little polymer was used during World War II, and that was okay. It just meant that the guns were a little bit heavier than they would have been if they were aluminum or polymer, and you had to maintain them. The M1 carbine was also carried by special operations forces and people who were fighting in Vietnam in the early days before the widespread issuance of the M16. It was a solid gun, it was a tried and true gun, it worked for the US forces, and it also worked for our allies the M1 Jungle Carpet. <laughs> 